Let's roll. We're making oxtail pho, not pho, pho. And yes, it takes a long time to make, but the good news is most of this time is in active time. So let's get on to it. We can start with the broth, which takes by far most of the preparation time. As you've already guessed, we're using some oxtail. It's perfect for making this broth because it's full of collagen and connective tissue, which when cooked long enough will make the broth super rich and the meat melt in your mouth. Speaking of meat, there's not all that much on the tail. That's why I'm also using some shank. Besides the meat and connective tissue, it also has the added bonus of bone marrow. And last but definitely not least, I'm gonna throw in some ox bones. These will give the broth even more body. Not to mention all that bone marrow. To start this operation, we'll throw all the bones in the meat into an empty pot. It's a good idea to start with the bones. They will act as an insulator and ensure that the meat doesn't get stuck to the bottom of the pot and potentially burn during the long cooking time. We're also gonna throw in a couple of cinnamon sticks, a couple of star knees, a small handful of cloves and a few bay leaves. Then we'll cover everything with cold water, which is important if we want to create a clear broth. And that's exactly what we're going for. A good bowl of pho always has a clear broth. Then cover with a lid and let it slowly come up to a boil. Now it's time to skim some of that scum. That's nothing more than denatured proteins that get churned up in the broth during the boiling process. But if we don't get rid of it now, it will break down into microscopic particles during the cooking and make the broth cloudy. Then cover it again and let it simmer quietly for four and a half hours. After which we're gonna add some fresh aromatics. Starting with a halved onion, a halved head of garlic, and a couple of sticks of lemongrass, which we're gonna give a few good smacks with the back of the knife to release all the oils and aromas. And a couple of big knobs of ginger, which we're just gonna give a rough chop. Once we've added those to the broth, we'll let it go for another hour and a half for a total cooking time of six hours. The reason why we add the fresh aromatics in the end is because most of them have a peak flavor extraction after about an hour, hour and a half. It's time to strain the broth. We can start by taking all the meat out. Here's a piece of the oxtail and as you can see after 6 hours it's just falling off the bone. The shank has well already fallen off the bone but that's not all that's come off. We've got all of these little nuggets of bone marrow. During the long cook, all that connective tissue has broken down and become sticky and scrumptious and just melt in your mouth. And the meat is just incredibly juicy and tender. We'll take out all the vegetables and the bones and basically all the big chunks. But be careful, there's some really good stuff left on the big chunks. The true carnivores will understand. Then get a big bowl and a sieve and strain out all the small bits. Until you're left with nothing but the best beef broth you've ever tried in your life. And yes, as you might have noticed, we're left with a whole lot of fat. But if you're not in a rush, here's a little trick. You can leave that broth in the fridge overnight and the next day all of that fat will have coagulated on the top. You can then easily scoop that off with a spoon. I don't know why, but that felt really satisfying. Don't take it all off though, leave a little bit. We've extracted all of that collagen protein, which when cooled down, realigns and becomes this jiggly gel. Oh, and do yourself a favor and save that beef fat. We'll use that soon to make the most insane roast potatoes. It's time to reheat the broth and season it before eating. Slowly bring it up to a boil and add a few pinches of salt. You're probably gonna need more than you think. Just give it a taste as you're going. After the soup has come up to temperature and is well seasoned, we'll lower in some of our meats. Just enough for as much as we're serving. A piece of the oxtail, some of the shank, and of course some bone marrow. While the meat is heating through, we have time to make a couple garnishes for the pho. Thinly slice some garlic, as well as some fresh chili. The type and heat of the chili and how much is entirely up to you as usual. Add both the chili and the garlic into a little bowl and then just cover it with vinegar. And that's it, simple as that. This will add brightness, acidity and spice to our pho. 
For the next garnish, again, we're going to thinly slice some onion. Add those to a bowl. Then we'll slice up some spring onions. To make it a little bit more interesting, just cut those at an angle. We eat first with our eyes, after all. And some of that soapy grass that you guys like so much. Alright, I'll take one for the cause. Give the cilantro a rough chop and add that to the bowl with the onions. Toss everything together and that's it. We've got a fresh little herb salad. Alright, last thing we need to do is boil some noodles. Get yourself some rice noodles and throw these in some boiling water for a few minutes or as long as it says on the package. And finally, it's time to eat. While those cook, we can extract that oxtail and pull the meat off of it. Look at that, it's all ooey gooey and sticky and delicious. And don't you dare get rid of those jelly tendon bits. Those are the best part. Just go around and pick everything off the bone. Heat up an appropriately themed bowl. First, go in the noodles. Then we will ladle in some of that rich aromatic broth. On one side, add a little bit of all the meats. Some of our oxtail. Some of our shank. And of course, one of those bone marrow morsels. Then spoon in some of our spicy vinegar and top with some of the herb salad. Cut yourself a couple of lime wedges and garnish with that. And that's it. You're about to enjoy a bowl of the best homemade pho. I like to squeeze in some of that fresh lime juice before I dig in. Mix it all together and get ready to get your mind blown. I don't think I really need to explain what's happening in that bowl but it's some of the most comforting food that you ever eat. Proudly and loudly slurp the noodles, because to do that is a compliment to the chef, and that's you. This was so good, I forgot I was eating cilantro, or coriander, depending on where you live. Roll out! Thanks again for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the videos. A lot of you haven't subscribed, I can see that in the analytics, so hit that button. Alright, stay tuned, love you!